All right, on the uh, on the bench today is my brand new E-Flight uh, Twin Otter. So if you've been watching the previous videos on the Twin Otter that I've done, it's been on our borrowed airplane. It was one of the very first uh, produced uh, Twin Otters. It was ordered, uh, back, actually I think it was even during the pre-order period, uh, back at the, uh, the end of November, early December is when that airplane was uh, ordered and arrived. And so there's a few differences between the, the very first one that I unboxed and did the assembly on and the brand new one that arrived here um, in May. So I'm just gonna cover a few of the differences. Uh, so if you're building one of these at home and you watched my previous video, you're saying, well, mine's a little different than this. What's going on here? So I'm just gonna cover a couple of those things uh, real shortly here on this, uh, this video so you guys are making sure you have the most updated information when you are building your Twin Otter. Which by the way, um, Seriously, this, is, this plane is probably so easy to build that if you went to the hobby shop or you ordered it from a Horizon Hobby and the box came in and you threw it in your car and drove to the flying field, um, you could basically be flying it um, within probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes if you had nothing but a few hand tools and maybe some CA glue. Uh, it goes together that quickly. But just to cover a couple of things that are different, I thought I would um, go ahead and do that today. And one of the biggest changes that is with the newer model than the previous one has to do with the uh, the vertical stabilizer here. There was a slight amount of interference with the uh, the elevator and the, um, the vertical stabilizer in which you had to um, kind of cut out uh, some area of, that, um, of the vertical surface there to allow the elevator to um, articulate properly and not bind up. So a uh, real easy thing to do on the original one, all I mean, just a little X-Acto knife or even a little screwdriver, you just kind of displace the foam a little bit. Well, they've taken care of that with, uh, with the new model here. Um, there is a little recessed area already in the, um, in the foam there, so you do not have to worry about any modifications to make that work. Otherwise, you just slide it in and then you put your uh, vertical fins on. And the vertical fins, of course, you can decide if you want to use those or not, these little guys right here. And it's really meant more for, uh, for water operation. So if you're never going to fly off water, you don't have to install them. But if you, uh, you are, uh, go ahead and do that. And that helps with, uh, as the prop wash kind of moves over the tail section here, helps keep it aligned. And I can say they definitely work because this plane tracks so incredibly straight in the water. So we'll still need a little glue on that. And just make sure you put those on after you put the, uh, the horizontal stabilizer uh, into place. Remember, I screwed that up on the last video. So otherwise, that's it for uh, the, the tail section here. Uh, no other changes that I could find um, for to the aircraft. Everything looked and went together just the same. But one thing that I did see different is they've now given you a, um, you gotta got two manuals here. You almost have like a, your full blown owner's manual that's got everything in it and a new supplement guide that actually really specializes in the model assembly. Um, this is not a very complicated model to build. Like I said, you could put it together in the field with a few hand tools, but they really went through and revisited the assembly steps and kind of made them a little bit more clear and a little bit easier to understand. And they actually numbered uh, the steps a little bit more in detail than they had before, but nothing really um, surprising on this except for the, um, the float section. They actually have a lot more detail in the float installation area than the previous one had. And I just had done a float uh, kind of install video the other day. And so I've noticed some things that are different on how they recommend in the manual versus how I did it. Um, I did the, the full float assembly uh, to start with, did build, built it on the bench just like I have my set here. And then what I found to be easier is you actually loosen up uh, one of these struts on the, on the front and then remove the other strut completely and leave that loose and you assemble the rear and then you assemble the front and that made it better. The assembly instructions actually have you install the guide wires on the fuselage first and then put the floats onto the guide wires with the guide wires already in place. So a little bit different um, assembly instructions. Um, I think either way would really be fine. Um, if you try to bench build it and put it on the airplane just as it sits here, you're going to run into all sorts of problems with the uh, getting the front to go together. That's why I recommended uh, leave that front loose and actually one of those removed. Um, if you follow the uh, the flight instructions here where you fly, you put the guide wires onto the fuselage first and then put the floats on, I think it'd be a lot easier. So just a couple of little tips there. Otherwise, um, both planes went together uh, remarkably quick no real differences or concerns of any any type here but i just want to make sure that you know that if you saw the previous videos and you've seen some of the posts on like rc groups 
and uh, some of the other comments about having to remove the foam back here, that that is no longer necessary. That has already been done. So if you're buying a, uh, a newer production model, that's already taken care of. Otherwise, yeah, the assembly goes just fine. You shouldn't have any issues at all. Just a couple of hand tools and a little bit of glue for the back here, and you can, uh, you can get your, your twin otter in the air in a matter of no time.